Maybe if we evened up a chunk over your right ear, I suggested. Margaret wiped her eyes dry and nodded. She handed me the scissors. I cut. We looked back in the mirror. It's like bangs. I tried to cheer her up. Sort of. Except bangs are in your front hair, not the sides, Margaret reminded me. Then she took a deep sigh and picked up the scissors and cut off all the hair over her forehead. Now the front half of her hair was all chopped off and the back half was long and straight and shiny. Not so good, Margaret said, looking in the mirror. Not so good, I agreed. We looked at her not so good hair in the mirror for a really, really long time without saying anything, which is very hard for me. Then Margaret's bottom lip began to shiver and her eyes filled up with tear balls again. She handed the scissors back to me and then she closed her eyes and turned around. All of it? I asked. All of it, she said. So I did, which is not exactly easy with those plastic art scissors, let me tell you. And just as I was finishing, the art teacher came in looking for us. Clementine, she shouted, what are you doing? And then Margaret went all hysterical and the art teacher went all hysterical and nobody could think of anything to do except the regular thing, which is send me to the principal's office. While I was waiting there, I drew a picture of Margaret with her hair chopped off. I made her look beautiful, like a dandelion. Here is a picture of that. If they had a special class for gifted kids in art, I would definitely be in it. Gifted means that you're very, very good at something. But they don't, which is also unfair. Only for math and English. I am not so good at English, okay, fine. But this year, I am in the gifted class for math. And here's the bad surprise. So far, no gifts. I told Principal Rice about that problem when she got back from calming down Margaret's mother. So far, no gifts, I told her, extremely politely. Principal Rice rolled her eyes to the ceiling then, like she was looking for something up there. Ceiling snakes, maybe, just waiting to drip on you. That's what I used to be afraid of when I was little, anyway. Now, I am not afraid of anything. Okay, fine. I am afraid of pointy things. But that is all, and boomerangs. Clementine, you need to pay attention, said Principal Rice. We need to discuss Margaret's hair. What are you doing on the floor? Helping you look for ceiling snakes, I reminded her. Ceiling snakes? What ceiling snakes, she asked. See what I mean? Me paying attention? Everybody else not? I am amazed they let someone with this problem be the boss of a school. All right now, Clementine, Principal Rice said in her, I'm trying to be patient, but it's getting harder voice. Why did you cut off Margaret's hair? I was helping, I said. And then I told Principal Rice about how I'd help her too. I answered the phone while you were gone. I ordered some new school pets and I told the gym teacher, we are never going to play dodgeball again. And I made two appointments for you. The phone kept going dead, so I guess it's busted, but at least I helped you a little. That's what I thought. There is a look they teach at per teach a person to make in principal school. That is not very nice. Scholars, that concludes our very first chapter of Clementine. Now, after reading that first chapter, you learn that Clementine is a very unique, quirky character that is oftentimes misunderstood by her principal, by her friend Margaret, by her teachers. Now, do you think Clementine is more mischievous or helpful? Mischievous means naughty or doing things to be bad. 
Next question. What problem is beginning to develop? So what do you think the problem might be so far? When you're done answering that question, you will move to the next question. What genre is the book Clementine? Pick the best answer. When I see that last line that says pick the best answer, it makes me think that there might be more than one answer that would work, but I need to pick the one that works best for this book. Okay, do we think the book is fiction? Means that the book is made up, it's a made up story. Is it nonfiction? That means that it's about true events or a real person with real facts. Or is it realistic fiction? Which means that the story might be made up and the characters' names might be made up, but something like this could happen in real life. Pick the best answer. Scholars, stay tuned for chapter two. When you are finished with this form, you are finished with the lesson for today. Nice.